Scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of Matthew, chapter 11, beginning to read on verse 28. Please listen to God's word. Come to me, all you who are struggling hard and carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Put on my yoke and learn from me. I'm gentle and humble, and you will find rest for yourselves. My yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So I was admitted to the hospital about a week ago at the end of August because of the effects of long COVID. I am negative now. And I did not expect to stay overnight, but that's what the medical staff had said that I needed. And when the doctor speaks, you listen. This was a Friday night going into a Saturday. It was one night only, I hoped, because I was scheduled to preach the next day, a Sunday. I needed to preach Sunday, more than a job, preaching is my call, this is who I am, it is what I was made to do, and I did not want to let you all down. And so when the hospital admitted me, I made it known that this could only be a one-night occurrence and that the sickness needed to go away quickly, so whatever needed to be done needed to be done on my time. Thank you very much. I was annoying. (laughs) I told anyone who would listen, doctors, support staff, nurses, I am preaching Sunday, please help me make this happen. And so I had uh, two conversations on Saturday morning, back to back. The first conversation was with my doctor who said, Greg, you are free to go. Be careful, lay down, and rest. But you are being discharged. Second conversation was with Doug. Doug had a preaching engagement last week in North Carolina, and he called me on his Saturday, and he said, Greg, I know how much you want to preach tomorrow, but I really think we need to find you coverage. And I said, Doug, I appreciate it, but I really want to preach. I think I can manage. I think I can grit my way through it. To which Doug said very kindly, next week, today, We are being installed as co-pastors. This decision is mine alone for another week. Let me have this. (laughs) It's a direct quote. Let me have this. And I said, okay. And so Nancy stepped up and mobilized the troops and, and the thorns preach each of the last couple weeks and Anne Godry liturgized and I have been beyond grateful for the way that this community has just stepped up while Doug and I have both been out, and I have always said, and I deeply believe this, that the church is bigger than any one person, that you could pluck me out or or Doug out or anyone at all, and the church would be okay. This is not my church. This is not Doug's church. This is God's church, and none of us, none of us are indispensable. And yet when it's you, When it's your own identity, your own sense of self-worth, your own sense of call, your own drive and desire to do the best and to be the best and to not let others down, things get a whole lot harder. Sometimes it's hard to slow down. Sometimes it is hard to admit that the circumstances have just become too much. Sometimes it is hard to ask for help and to lean on others rather than doing it all on your own. I mean, this is the American way, right? Work hard, do well, don't ask for help, lift your chin up and carry the load yourselves. Friend, I suspect there are a lot of people in this room carrying the load themselves. I suspect there are a lot of people in this room who subscribe to this mentality, myself included. 
We value things like grit, determination, and drive, individual success. How are you? Fine, even when we're not. We're stressed, but we swallow it. We are drowning, but we do not show it. We are exhausted, yet we press on. Even if we think we know better, we find ourselves falling back into these patterns, these culturally ingrained lies. The bootstrap mentality, which, by the way, the comedian Dave Chappelle says is physically impossible to do. You cannot pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Try, you will fail. It cannot happen. And yet I imagine many of us are physically exhausted from trying, maybe even spiritually exhausted too. Today's scripture from the book of Matthew is a balm for those of us who have tried hard and are still worn out. For those of us who are tired and weary and weak, who are just scraping by. For those of us who have mastered the art of putting on brave faces and pretending we are okay even when we are not, because that is what we have been told strength looks like but inside we are carrying the weight of the world. In today's scripture, Jesus reminds us that life's burdens were never meant to be carried alone. Jesus speaks to each one of us just as he did to his disciples in today's scripture, saying, come to me, all of you who are struggling hard and carrying heavy loads. Those of you who feel weighed down by life, who are struggling to do it all on your own, come to me, and I will give you rest. In his teaching, Jesus uses this metaphor of a yoke, which is a really unusual metaphor because a yoke is something that is associated with work and not rest. Farmers would take two working animals like oxen and join them together, pairing the more experienced ox with a less experienced one. The farmers would take this yoke and yoke them together by slipping the necks of each through a wooden cross plate. This way the ox would be literally bound to one another. In work. The more experienced ox would serve as a guide, as a role model, instructing the less experienced, more fragile animal on how to walk and how to work and on which path to take as they shoulder life's burdens together. Friends, hear the good news of the gospel. Jesus Christ invites us each to put on God's yoke, to let go of this idea that we walk alone and to instead embrace life together with him, to find the rest that can only come from, from letting go and from leaning in to the care and the wisdom of Jesus Christ. Friends, this act of being yoked, of being willingly bound to one another requires a great deal of humility and submission. It requires something countercultural, almost anti-achievement, going against the grain, letting go of self-importance and admitting that we are dependent on one another and on God. And so Jesus invites us into a position of vulnerability to bow our heads and to willingly slip our necks into his yoke. Jesus tells us life does not have to be so crippling. You do not have to carry this burden all alone. Let me show you another, better way. And then Jesus invites us into that other better way. Put on my yoke, learn from me, and I will give you rest, for my yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. Friends, this is what 
Jesus does say. I also want us to note for a minute what Jesus does not say. Jesus does not say, put on my yoke and all the weight of the world will disappear. Jesus has felt the weight of the world. He has bore the weight of the world. He has bled for the weight of the world. And he has felt life at its absolute most dire. And so he knows that some burdens are simply overwhelming. And so Jesus does not and cannot promise us that this yoke will make all of life's problems disappear. Jesus is not a genie. Faith does not work this way. Sometimes I wish it does, but it does not. So instead, Jesus invites us to do something else. He invites us first to submit, to bow down, to slip our necks through the yoke. And then Jesus invites us to walk. The road is the same, the weight is the same, the labor is still hard, and the path is still treacherous. The journey is still the same. But it's a little less lonely. It's a little less burdensome. And so Jesus says, walk with me. Won't you please walk with me and let life get a little easier? Friends, life gets easier if we let it. Life gets more manageable if we submit to God, and life gets more enjoyable if we can find a way to slow down. This past summer, I, I walked an ancient pilgrimage called the Camino de Santiago. It was a 500-mile route backpacking across northern Spain, and as I walked, I learned a little bit about what it means to carry a heavy load. I learned about what weight can do and burdens can do to the body, uh, blisters and bruises and, and swollen knees. And friends, if you were to ask a pilgrim on their Camino, on their walk, if you were to ask them, tell me, what does a real pilgrim look like? You would likely get two very different sets of answers depending on how far along that person is in their pilgrim journey. This being a spiritual route largely, you would assume we would know better, but most of us pilgrims on our journey, we have this ideal, this survivalist woodsman ideal that with even a hint of perspective looks a whole lot like that bootstrap mentality. A real pilgrim hikes 15 miles a day, no less. A real pilgrim stays in, in hostels, not hotels. A real pilgrim treats their blisters, down some ibuprofen, then gets on walking. A real pilgrim definitely doesn't use taxis. A real pilgrim does not complain. And a real pilgrim always, always carries their own weight. So on the journey, there were these two men, a father and a son from Sri Lanka, the father was in his mid-60s. The son was quite a bit younger, and they were on the trail together. These two men had never been particularly close, and so they decided that they wanted to work on their relationship with each other by taking this walk, and so they walked. And there are a lot of mountains on the trail, and one day early on, they were approaching a really steep incline. And the younger and stronger son, he was just plowing through. But the father began to visibly struggle. And so the son would hike further up the hill, and, and, and he looked back, and he saw the father way out behind him. And so he called out. He said, Dad, let me take your pack. And the dad said, No, son, thank you. I've got it. They kept walking. Fifteen minutes later, the son was real high up the mountain now, and he'd take a break to stop and wait for his dad to catch up. Dad caught up, and son said again, Dad, let me take your pack. And the dad said, son, no thank you, I can do it myself, really. They kept walking, but it was, they discovered not one mountain, but a series of mountains where you hit the summit and you think you're done only to discover another and then another and then another. And this gap between father and son only got worse. So finally, the son stopped and he looked back down at his father, now way down the mountain. 
and his dad looked like he was ready to collapse. So the son stopped, and he decided to go back down the mountain, down the path he had already come. And this time he did not ask his father for permission. He simply said, Dad, give me your pack. The way the father tells the story, his pride was a little bit bruised. But he gave in and he gave the son his backpack and the son took the pack and he slung it over his stomach. So he had one pack in the front and another in the back and then he just plowed up the mountain with the two packs. There was a stranger, a German pilgrim who was watching all of this unfold just at the tail end, this transfer of backpacks. And he was able to catch up to the father and walk with the father up the mountain. And the German pilgrim said to the father, you have a good friend, he carries your pack. And the father felt his pride a little bit restored, and he said, oh, no, 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 that's not my friend. That's my son. To which the German pilgrim said, ah, you have a good friend for a son. Friends, the pilgrims at the beginning of their journey want to conquer it all themselves. But pilgrims at the end recognize the value of a good friend, the beauty of someone who is willing to share the load, the joy that it is to walk together. Travel on this road long enough and quickly, or pilgrims will quickly realize they were never walking alone. They were part of a larger network, a river, a trail, a great cloud of witnesses. And so they embrace it, this struggle together. They embrace the walk together. Friends, today at 4 p.m., Doug and I will be yoked to one another. I will lean on his experience, and he will lean on my energy. He will no longer be head, and I will no longer be associate. We will simply be pastors. We will be co-pastors. It is a model for ministry that is rarely seen but incredibly biblical, it's a model that rejects cultural trends and the bootstrap mentality. It's a model that requires mutual submission before one another, yes, but always and ultimately before God. It requires that we both lower our necks and slip our heads through God's yoke, that we let God lead us both. Friends, you are invited on this journey together, not a journey between me and Doug, but a journey between you and God. If you are tired or weak or weary, if you are exhausted from carrying the weight of the world, if you are willing to let go of this need to do it all yourself, Jesus invites you in to a new way of life. Come to me, all of you who are struggling hard, and carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. My yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Let it be so for you and also for me. Amen. Please rise in body or in mind for our final.